Thanks for staying with us. Now, starting your own business is a risky and often stressful endeavor, but the fear of failure can be particularly strong for female entrepreneurs. A study have shown women due to a lifetime of social conditioning tend to be more risk averse than men. But the good news is that we can do or we can undo all that negative conditioning with the right support. Now, women entrepreneurs play a significant role in the global economy in the 21st century. Studies say that some areas where women struggle include adequate training, area, um, access to startup capital, and poor family support, to mention a few. So our focus today is to explore how supporting female entrepreneurs can build a sustainable Africa. Please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-84663. All right, so before I bring in our guest, like in a minute or two, I just want to hear your thoughts, you know, about the struggles of, I mean, you were trying to talk about yeah. your challenges and all of that. And how do you think, you know, women um, can play, what role do you think women can play in terms of building a sustainable Africa? Well, women are largely the drivers of the economy from research. Mm -hmm. I think 58% of businesses in Nigeria, in Africa as a whole, is owned by um, women. women. But part of the problem I see why women, despite the fact that there's a huge number of women in entrepreneurship, there's, um, what's it called, um, dart of profit making. Because most men, particularly lack of education, is a problem. Because a lot of businesses are not run professionally. Do you understand? Very because small scale businesses. Very micro. No, micro, <laughs> micro. <laughs> then lack of access to funds, mm -hmm. collateral. A lot of women are not allowed to have own properties. Own properties. Mm. Then the issue of emergency entrepreneurship. Lack of training. A lot of people just go into it, not out of passion, but because they wake up one day and they and want to necessity. support their business and they still want to be around their children, they still want to do school runs, they don't want to so, so you just start up something. Yes. And some women are not are not naturally entrepreneurs, mm. but they find themselves in it. So it's always a challenge on how to build the business. Mm. So I think what we should focus the focus should be particularly the private and um, you know probably banks and all the financial institutions should be capacity building. Mm. That's my take. Absolutely. Jennifer, let me come to you. What's your what's your take on the on women entrepreneurs? What's your assessment? You know, I I yeah, I agree with everything um Lamy just said, uh, because we've seen it in time past and how things have been. Um I think one of my uh one of my challenge I have with um women in business is the fact that a lot of them don't um they don't dream big i feel like somehow some of them feel like it is a problem for them to dream big that as a woman you shouldn't dream big you shouldn't dream of your business being one of the best in in your country Maybe in your state in your business should be bigger than that of um the normal man who's also doing business or running a company and the fact that um, you're an entrepreneur or even if it's a petty business doesn't mean that you can't upskill and turn it into a very big enterprise and i feel like that's what people or women need to start looking at they need to have this this um dream big mentality i can do this i can upskill i can be better my business can be bigger than where it is right now mm -hmm. and like um lami said i think the best way is to increase your capacity building. We need to start working on things like that, on your skills, on your mindset, and how you can make more profits in your business. Absolutely. All right, so let me just bring in our guest. Adeze Shokan is a fanatic for economic prosperity in Africa. She believes in a prosperous Africa built by Africans. She is a poverty reduction and social impact strategist, specializing in the development of local markets and job creation in the digital economy sector. She believes that the future of Africa will be built by entrepreneurs and intrapreneurs that leverage technology, innovations, and the power of their minds to tackle complex problems across diverse sectors. Thank you so much. And she's joined us live from Abuja. Thank you so much, Adeze, for joining us this evening. Thank you very much for having me. It's good to be here. 
All right, so you heard our banter on the conversation about, you know, women, entrepreneurs, and some of the challenges that, you know, uh, that women face. In your assessment, are there common challenges of women in business across Africa, or is it just uniquely um, um, tied to the Nigerian terrain? Um, first of all, I think it's important to stress that um, supporting women entrepreneurs is just good business. Um, societies where opportunities for women are on par with men, they have fewer child deaths, they have fewer conflicts, they have better public services and healthcare. And I think it was Lemmy that was also trying to insinuate that, you know, research has shown that where women own businesses thrive, the community wins. Yeah. The challenges cut across Africa, it's not just Nigeria, right? Um, and there's a need to continue to support women. And one of the challenges are, first of all, is, is the mindset of the woman, right? She needs to understand that she can scale, she can do big things, um, she doesn't need to just focus on small, uh, just micro businesses in, in her neighborhood or in her house. Um, the businesses can become conglomerates that can be, that can, you know, um, raise funding like flutter wave, right? And we see a woman's picture instead of, instead of the, the man. Um, so she needs to understand that she can take territory, she can take over uh, different regions and different territories with her business ideas. So there's a place of the mindset that, that needs to happen. And this is across all of Africa. Um, it's not just peculiar to Nigeria alone. Um, secondly, it's also uh, stereotypes. So, and I don't know why we have this, you know, well, it's understandable as well. Um, if I decide to dream big and become a CEO and a founder of companies and I have to travel and set up shop in, and outpost in different countries, um, what about my kids? What about my husband? Would, or would I get married? And would my, would, would my boyfriend think that um, I'm not uh, I'm stepping on his ego or things like that? So there's these stereotypes that sort of restricted women to certain types of uh, enterprises that they should focus on, you know, just do makeup and beauty and, and tailoring and, and stop there and don't even go far. We need to break those barriers and, and encourage ourselves and say, you know what, well, let's become like a, a like a Tara or like an Ibuku Awashika or like, you know, other, uh, you know, well-known uh, female entrepreneurs that are building companies um, that are being recognized uh, in the world. The third thing is also the issue in Africa with sectors. So we're restricted to certain sectors um, because they are considered female sectors. But now the bar has been raised. There's more support for women to, you know, you know, uh, go into software, go into real estate, go into venture capital. Um, so there's need for for us to be educated around, you know, the other places, the other sectors that we can play in and we can thrive in where there are gaps and when where we can even, you know, do better than men. So there's a there's a boldness and um, and mindset that needs to be dealt with. There's a stereotype that cuts across Africa. There's under there's knowledge that needs to so there needs to be data that shows where there's need for for successful businesses to thrive in. Of course, there's need. I can't emphasize the need for capacity building and of course uh, uh, financial support. There's still more to be said, but but th th that would be how to answer your question. Awesome. Okay, you want to come in? <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Um. Adeze, do you by any chance think that um, part of the problems women engage and counter, uh, um, rather, is uh, more of social factors, cultural factors, religious factors? You know, you as a woman can't stand up today and just say, I'm packing my bag, I'm going to Abuja for a business. You have to consider your home, you have to consider your husband and all that. So what's the role of tradition, what's the role of the social factor in all of this? Those issues are real, um, but they are not an excuse. I, I can say that I am a married woman, I have kids, um, and I travel. I consider myself more of an entrepreneur than an entrepreneur. So I, I support entrepreneurs, I work in a company and I see my role as, you know, I see myself as the CEO of my department, right? So I also get to travel to expand the business. Um, and this is why I speak to men. Uh, my husband is quite encouraging. He understands that this is my vision. He understands that this is what makes me happy. This is my purpose. And so he encourages me. We have an agreement. We have an arrangement with the kids. And I'm at, I'm at peace. And that encouragement makes me you know, go out there and be comfortable doing that. For some women, it's not the case. Some people don't have husbands that are encouraging or, or men in their lives or fathers in their lives that encourage or culture, the culture and the environment in which they grew up in is not as encouraging. We've had women break through that those barriers, right? Um, and say, you know what, I know that this is what we, the environment that we've grown up in or this is my situation, but I know that what I'm doing is, is right. 
what helps in that kind of situation is having a support system right that um that pushes women to to want to achieve more we watched this movie recently hidden figures which talks about three women in the united states um, who were, you know, providing like breaking technology and mathematical solutions for NASA. For NASA. And, and one of them had a husband at first who was very, very, you know, not supportive, right? But because she had her female counterparts, like saying, you know, stop complaining about this, stop whining about this situation. If you want, if you believe that you can do this, then you have to, you know, face the challenge head on. And, you know, if you look at history, the women's suffrage movement, all the issues, I mean, I think we, we have it better now than our parents did, or our, our grandparents did. Um, it was harder in their times, but they still pushed through. So I think we need to get that boldness that we have that in it in us, right, to push through because we're not just paving the way for ourselves to make money, we're paving the way for other women and for the country to, to be better. Absolutely. Jennifer, let me come to you. Is Jennifer there? Or did we lose her? All right, so while we are trying to get Jennifer, um, you know, there was something, I don't know it was, if it was Lamy that mentioned it or it was you that mentioned it about, you know, that, that fear. So I have uh, some friends of mine that work in bank of industry, you know, and they've said, oh, Uwa, can you look for entrepreneurs, women entrepreneurs, that there's a particular fund that is specific for women, you know, to be able to access that fund. Okay, so that is one hand. I love what you said about collateral. Sorry, I was going to say that I, part of the problem is lack of information. Yeah, yeah, I've we, never heard of that. Well, well no, it's available. So the, the but funds, how many people so, know? No, it's not even about knowing now. It is about the conditions you know, to mm. accessing that fund, collateral. right? Yeah, the collateral and all of those. So the, even for the few women that I reached out to that I know that they are ready for those funds is to upscale their business. Lack they couldn't access, access those assets. funds because, of course, assets is one of them and all of that. But another thing, again, I was in a workshop where we were there for like, um, was it two or three weeks where it was all women entrepreneurs and all of that. The thing that kept on coming back and back again was the fact that women, you know, are afraid you know, when you stand in front of an investor, you are afraid to quote big figures. Mm. So you just say, just give me $100,000. Mm. You understand? Meanwhile, <laughs> a man will come into that same room and tell, you and tell me that dollars. I need a billion dollars and he will not mm. budge. Right? So mm -hmm. why is this so? And how can we, because you are a venture capitalist, right? How can we get more women to be bold enough, you know, to say, you know what? I demand $500 million as an invest investment. You know, <laughs> because women are so afraid so to ask, even when that of... fund is available, they are afraid to ask. They are always scared. And Why is this so, Adesi? Yeah. 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 You, so going I was to... going to say, particularly the women. I also think, I, you know, um, uh -huh. go ahead, go ahead, Adesi. Okay, so women have, and I think maybe this is how we also grew up, um, you know, there, there's a lot of confidence issues that needs mm. to be dealt with. In, in our programs, yeah, we're a venture capital uh, firm, but we also have a, a capacity building arm um, under our foundation where we actually prep women before they go and see investors. Mm -hmm. In that program, we let them know all the ways you can get money. So you mentioned one like Bank of Industry, if it's not uh if you don't meet the criteria there are other investors. ways that you yeah. have uh, huge restrictions there's angel investors but you see in all of these things you still require um you still need to meet certain criteria uh all of, you know in all of this and one of that is being able to pitch uh clearly you have to have clear understanding so this is not about man and woman it's right I, of your... you're not going to get opportunities because i'm a woman right you're you're going to get opportunity because you're smart and you're intelligent so you need to know your stuff. You need to know your onions. So you need to know all the business theories, so your value proposition is, what who your customer segments are, the market size, how much money you're going to make. You need to be able to do a budget and say, this is how much I need for my operations, and this is how much profit I want to make hmm. to be able to take this thing from point A to, to point, point Z. B. That requires a lot of boldness, you're right. So we coach people to say, they keep practice. So every week, <laughs> in the program they have to keep practicing they have to practice in front of a mock audience right before we take them to uh the dragons then right where they have to meet with those investors yeah and so that way they and you know they're with their peers you know they're hearing other people practice they're getting feedback they're getting support and encouragement because they're not used to this type of um 
uh, you know, standing in front of the, uh, standing on stage and speaking. So confidence building is one of the key things uh, that's very key. Also bringing role models, you know, successful people who have gone there before to, to encourage them and say, oh, I've, I've actually had fear before. I couldn't stand and speak, but the more I practiced it, um, the more I had a support group, the more I was able to, to overcome, overcome that fear. Okay. <laughs> Do we have Jennifer what, what, now? Yeah, what, you were going to say something. I was going to say that another problem that we have at women is women have the natural tendency to confine themselves to traditional um, ventures. To say, okay, it has to be petty. Mm. It has to be small. I can't do it big because of my parents, because of my husband, because of my children. Mm. I think we also have to move outside. Let me just that. open one corner shop. And it has to be a supermarket. <laughs> okay. That one annoys me <laughs> to no end. You yeah, want to set up a business. It's a supermarket. <laughs> what else? Do you know, I was telling my friend, I want to go into real estate. I was talking to her about all what I wanted to do, how much I'm going to make. She said, she was looking at me. She said, let me do. You just mentioned 500 million. Wow. Just like that. It wasn't, I said, she needs money. <laughs> what can I mention? <laughs> she was even afraid to mention the money. Can you imagine? I said, you have to. Yes. So how can we solve this problem? <laughs> because no matter I, what I, you do. I, I want, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I did say, go ahead. Okay. Okay. I was going to say that, you know, again, one of the first things that you tackle in, um, in, in such programs, like, because we run a very structured program, we also run mixed programs for women who are comfortable to, and, you know, interact with men and, and show that they can be in the same room with a man and not cower. We also run women only programs for, you know, there are women that, for, based on culture and religious practices, you know, they can't really interact with men at certain levels. Mm. One of the first things that we have to say is, um, beyond introducing yourself and practicing your pitch, is also vision casting, mm. right? So how, how big do you see this going? What's the mm. impact? And, and you're right, by the time when we start painting the vision, they start very small. But by the time they leave, they're thinking about scale, they're thinking about franchising, mm. right? But somebody has to show them that how part. big this thing can be. Mm. right i can own a company that starts now in my garage but it can be big mm. i can have different companies in different countries or i can have one company but i'm serving multiple clientele across mm. the world Absolutely. but i also wanted to say that it's not every woman actually that is called i see this as a calling <laughs> i don't think every woman in nigeria in africa might have this type of business every woman can if they wanted to but they are, I, I'm actually speaking today to those women who know within themselves that they can do much more than mm. they are doing, and, but they are, they are limited by fear or by, or by skill or by finance, that there's lots of information out there. You just need to tell yourself first that I can do this and I'm going to find information, right? You could visit VenturesPlatform.com to get some help and initial support. Absolutely. Um, and then you, you, you get that guidance step by step on how to go about about okay, so Adese, let me so just think, pause you for a you know, minute. Really happy to um, okay. Yeah, let me pause you for a minute because we just need to go on a very quick break. When we return, we'll continue the conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Okay.